Let's get started. Hello, my name is David Vope and today I'm going to be walking you through some of the principles that I use to create my miniature automated storage and retrieval system. This is still a work in progress, but so far I have made quite a bit of progress on the design of the Z-axis assembly and I'm going to teach you about control systems and some of the other principles that you can use to create your own project. Now, it's hard to talk about automation without talking about the simple stepper motor. This is called a NEMA 17 motor and that number is determined by the size of the faceplate. Any NEMA 17 motor is going to be interchangeable with any other NEMA 17 motors. Here we can see the specifications of the motor. The part number in particular is very important because you can use that in order to figure out the rated current as well as the torque, holding torque. And there are people who have covered that topic much better than I'm willing to at this moment. This is the output shaft. And you can see that there's a flat spot right here for attaching whatever load you want to connect. In our particular case, it's a pulley. This little black thing in there is called a set screw. And we can use one of these Allen keys to loosen and tighten it on the shaft. So we're gonna go ahead and install one. We want to align it with the flat spot and it's pretty easy to tell when you're in position. And one very important thing is to make sure you tighten both of them because you do not want your pulley coming loose. Perfect, nice and tight, not going anywhere. Along with our stepper motor, we have what is called the timing belt. This particular timing belt is a GT2 timing belt because pitch or the distance between the teeth is exactly two millimeters. As the pulley is rotating, the teeth of the pulley mesh perfectly with the timing belt. It's creating a force in one direction or the other which is what allows our miniature automated storage and retrieval system to move the Z-axis up and down. This right here is the brains of the entire operation. Whatever I program it to do, it will send the signal off to our robot over here using a stepper motor. So what it sends are a series of pulses which will in turn tell the motor to move forward or move backwards. Now, the interface that it uses to do that is this CNC shield stepper driver. As you can see right here, it comes right off and it will sit right on top of the Arduino. On the actual ASRS itself, I have an Arduino Mega, which is the big brother of this Arduino that's in my hand. And what that allows me to do is have extra input and output because I like having the extra ports that I can use to expand as the project grows. All right, looking at this CNC shield, this board is designed to accept 12 to 36 volts DC. As many of you might already know, red is positive and black is negative. These are called screw terminals. They're very commonly used in both hobby and industrial. Taking a closer look at this stepper driver, we see that there's a pin called enable. We're gonna wanna match it with this section on the board that says EN. There we go. As for a stepper motor, we're going to plug it into these pins right underneath. Thank you very much for taking the opportunity to learn with me. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I will be linking my code in the description below. If you want any of the parts that I used in the creation of my little robot, I'll be linking them in the description and you can buy them. So once again, thank you. 
and I look forward to seeing you again next time.